Hi, welcome to Sew Denim Quilting. I'm Glenda and today we're going to be working on turning our blocks that we made, our tile blocks, into a quilt. As you can see here, I have my 20 blocks that I made up on my design wall. In today's tutorial, I will be taking our finished blocks that we've pieced together and sandwiching them with our batting and our backing. And I will be using some painter's tape, my rotary cutter, some glue, got my rulers. And those will be the items I will be using to make, to start quilting our blocks. And today's tutorial is to show you how I quilt as I go because I don't have a long arm. Oh, and we're gonna use glue too. This is important, the glue is important. So I like to quilt my quilts as I go. And one of the techniques I use is the no sash, one of the no sashing methods. And so that's what we're gonna be doing today. So we have our block and then I cut my batting just a hair bigger. Um, on one side, it's it's equal to my bat to my square, and then I, well, actually this one, yeah, this one is, yeah, see, I have it. And then we will be cutting this down when we're done, but this gives me a little bit of room when quilting, in case it shrinks a little and it's a little confused, not perfect. And then we will cut our batting or backing about an inch larger. Um, these squares are 10 inches. So I'm going to cut cut my backing 11 inches by 11 inches so that when, when I center it up on my batting, I make sure that I have backing all the way around. So first let's cut, that's a 10 inch square, or 11, sorry, 11, 11 inch square. See, I'm trying to remember how, I think I can get this one, the side that I want to cut. And even up my, see where, I want to make sure, see how many pieces I can get out of this one. I can get, I'm also going to be using this material as my border. Let's cut from this side. I think that's trying to, no, I'm cutting it from this side. Yes, I am cutting it from this side. Just so that I can cut it evenly. I'm gonna cut, make sure my, everything's even and straight. Line it up on my board. And I go over just a little bit because then I can um, trim it up when I'm done. But I want the I want the bottom to be straight, this to be straight, so that I don't get any little wonky pieces in here when I cut it. So here's one. Here's eleven. Make sure that this is going to be over the edge there a little bit. A little bit more. Okay. Rotary cutter. Okay. It looks like I need to get a new blade. Sharp blade helps. Apparently, mine's not sharp. Oh, 
this piece out of the way. Okay. I'm going to get two squares out of this because it's folded in half. So I'll have one ready for the next one. My rotating mat. That way, I don't. That way, I can spin it. And I'm not worrying about whether these are straight. That doesn't bother me. Really, I don't don't need to square this up because I'm gonna be cutting it off anyway, but I just like to start with it squared up. pieces. I'm going to lay down backing face down. Put our batting down. Well, then we'll put our batting. And it's going to go bumpy side down. And then our block on the top. And then what I like to do since I don't like to pin, I'm going to use some school glue, just regular old Elmer's glue, and then I'm going to tack it down. Give me some room in the. About halfway. And I'm kind of staying within, not right up to the edge, because I'm not going to sew right up to the edge. So I don't want it all the way up to the edge. This is just going to help tack it down. We'll go to the ironing board, and we will iron it down a little bit of heat, and that will keep it tacked down. Much easier than putting down pins and these are small enough sections that it works this works great it's kind of like basting it down but we just use cheap school glue okay now we have our sandwich now I'm gonna get it red I'm gonna iron it iron it down real quick then I'll be back to show you how I prep it for sewing um, I, I don't free motion quilt yet. I'm not quite confident enough to do that. So I'm just going to straight line, but I'm going to do, um, diagonals on mine and I'll show you how I set up to do that. So now I'm back at the, uh, my, my cutting mat here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tape off the edges so that I don't sew too close to the edge. Cause I want to make sure that I don't sew with, don't sew more than I want to keep a half an inch at least on each side so that I when I going to put this together I have material to work with so what I do is I take and I line up the edge 
of my trimmed block on a line that I can see. And then I bring it down a half an inch and place my tape. And this is just regular painter's tape that you can get from the dollar store or hardware store. Um, works great. So I'm just using the edge of my ruler as my guide. I'm gonna tape this down. Yeah, this is one inch tape. Um, I think you can get a quarter inch tape. I don't know. This is just what we have at our house. So this is what I'm using. Improvise. So line up my edges best I can. And then again, I go down, down a half an inch and place my tape. And this is just again to keep me from sewing past the edge so that I have edge to work with when I sew my blocks together when I'm done quilting. Ah, gotta leave that down there so that I can use it with my edge. Not done yet. Now from here you could go and start free motion quilting if that's what you wanna do. I am gonna do a diamond pattern and to kinda help me, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna use the painter's tape and I, I kind of went ahead and did this um, on a piece of paper to determine where I wanted my lines to be. Let's see. Oops. I'm gonna make sure that I do this the same way on every, every corner. be sewing on that side. So I need to put my tape on this side. Alright. Corner to corner. Where I want my sew line. This one corner. And I need a longer piece of tape. Maybe. Maybe I use this one first. next spot that I had determined, which was right there. And these aren't going to be perfect, but it's okay. This will help me, and it might not be perfect, but that's okay. side. The painter's tape will kind of be my edge to guide my needle. I keep cutting these too short. 
Okay, I need to make a bigger piece. See, it just pulls up. It doesn't. It's great for painting on walls, but I can't use it on fabric. All right. Now, if I really wanted to be precise, which I know my, my seams aren't precise anyway, I could use the 45, make sure that they're at a 45. piece over here. Let's use this piece. It shifted a little bit. I think I'm okay. All right. Now we'll take this to the sewing machine and we'll sew our lines and then reposition our tape going the other way so that we make our diamonds. All right. I'm at the sewing machine with our prepped block and I'm going to line it up the very corner. Set my needle down. That way I know I'm in the right spot. There. Alright. And I'm just going to use my the edge of my painter's tape as my guide. And if I do sew over my painter's tape, it's okay, it'll pull off. It's not permanent. Okay, now I'm gonna do this to each line and then we will Going the other direction. All right. I'm going to trim these up real quick. Oh, that looks back back. This is what happens when you have a sewing machine that doesn't have an automatic cutter. You get little spots like this, but it's okay. Nobody's perfect. And in the scheme of things, nobody will probably even notice. the back and here's the front. I like to trim up my edges before I start. All right so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these off so we can go the other way. See our nice pretty little line. Was the side that we did we double taped because it wasn't long enough. Oops. Oh well we saw a straight line on the other side. See I cut the tape a little bit, but that's okay. And it's not exactly straight. But you wouldn't have noticed that if I hadn't pointed it out. All right, so now we're gonna go the other way with our, make our lines go this way so that we have our diamond, diamond shape. Let's see where we're at. Corner to corner. Turn on a long piece of tape, which one's my one there? one with a little extra piece on it, which is right here. Okay. 
corner to corner here. I'm turning it because this is the way my brain works. I'm left handed, so. My brain works a little different. So if this doesn't make sense to you, I'm sorry. Especially if you're right-handed. Let's see, right. It's not looking right. Probably because I'm still going just because it's supposed to be on this side. All right. This will make more sense now. See, sometimes it doesn't make sense, and sometimes you have to take a second look at it. It's okay. Second time sticking down isn't, isn't as sticky, but it's sticky enough. Okay, so this, the, this side's the straight side of our tape. There we go. That doesn't. looked a little crooked to me. So we redid it. And there we go. And I'm just going to sew down like I did before on each side and then I'll come back and I'll trim it up. All right, we're back from the sewing machine and we've sewed all our lines on both sides. Now comes the unveiling to see our pretty lines. Yes, it does. It does pull off for the a little bit of the a little bit, but we're that's okay. That's going to be caught in our uh, seam line anyway. But unfortunately, seam material likes to fray. Trim that up anyway. Okay, now we're going to trim this up. I'm just using basically my lines that I had before.
All right, we've trimmed it up all around the edges. And in my next video, I will show you how I sew these together without using any sashing, my non, the non-sashing method. So that'll look like the look like these. And then we'll sew these together and together in rows. So we'll sew them together in groups of two, and then we'll sew them together into rows. And then we'll row, sew the rows together. But I'm going to show you in my next video how to attach them together without sashing. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to see how we connect these blocks together, be sure to hit the like and subscribe button so you'll be notified when I upload my next video. Thanks for watching.